Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC course on Interactomics. In our previous lecture, we discussed about different types of methods which have been used for studying protein-protein interactions. Though many interactions have been discovered by using yeast 2 hybrid or immunoprecipitation studies, they report for high false positive rates as well as poor reproducibility of some of the earlier discussed methods have been a major limitation. Aside from these technical issues, both the methods immunoprecipitation and yield to hybrids are primarily endpoint assays that occur in a closed system inside the cells. So, modulating the experimental conditions and different type of parameters becomes very challenging. Protein microarrays address some of these limitations such as providing the open system that enables the monitoring effect of various types of modifications. In today's lecture, we will discuss some of the high throughput approaches for studying protein interactions which are using different type of protein microarray platforms. We will cover a broad introduction of powerful protein microarray platforms, discuss various types of protein microarrays, understand the basic workflow of any given protein microarray experiment and go over the basic steps involved in data processing in a protein microarray experiment. High throughput genomic and proteomics projects are so called because they capture data at the scale of entire organism and incorporate data into relational databases from which insight into various biological systems organization of physiological networks can be derived. Different types of hypothesis can be made based on these large data sets. The genomic era has fostered the development of many new methods such as sequencing, SNPs as well as generation of DNA microarrays. The success of DNA microarrays at the time when most of the genes were sequenced, it was almost during the year 2000 till 2003 when we had availability of all the gene sequences. At that time, DNA microarray technology reached to its maximum potential because it was very easy to screen thousands of genes and full genome of any organism such as human for which almost 30,000 genes were already available. So, by using DNA microarrays, scientists have shown the potential of high throughput genomic technologies. The success of genomic technologies such as DNA microarrays have motivated the development of protein microarrays. Protein microarrays are microscopic arrays which comprise thousands of discrete proteins printed on the chip surface. Now, the concept of microarrays has stirred a great deal of excitement in proteomics community because it can be applied for several applications such as biomarker discovery, protein protein interactions functional characterization of proteins, identification of 
substrates, drug inhibitor studies, etc. Once the protein microarray technology is fully realized, it promises to enable the study of broad variety of protein features at an unprecedented pace and scale. Protein microarrays fall into two general broad classes, antibody arrays and test protein arrays. As shown in the slide, the antibody array is an abundance based method which intends to inform the users or investigators how much of each protein is present in each sample or to identify the proteins whose abundance is differentially expressed in one sample as compared to other sample. For example, comparison of control with test conditions. In antibody arrays, thousands of antibodies are printed on the chip surface and it can be used to measure proteins or other biomolecules in different sample so as to compare the control versus experimental conditions for protein abundance measurement. In the test protein arrays, the proteins are spotted as opposed to the antibodies. This is done by using the procedure that uses the activity of proteins on the surface. The goal of these test protein arrays is to perform functional studies so that different type of functions can be assigned. Different type of biological questions related to protein activity and its function can be studied by using protein microarrays. Protein microarrays have also been used for assaying the protein function, protein interactions, studying about small molecule interactions and many other applications linked to the protein biomarker discovery. As compared to the DNA microarrays, which have shown its promises and potential in various biological applications, there are very few published protein microarray based studies. The protein microarrays still remains very challenging just because of the challenges of generating the content which is protein. Gavin Macbeth at Harvard first demonstrated the feasibility of printing the protein on the chip surface in a high density array which was similar to the DNA microarrays. In 2000, at the time when DNA microarrays have reached to its maximum potential, the proteomics community was still wondering whether similar type of success can be repeated at the protein microarrays level. So, given Macbeth first showed the concept that proteins can be printed in high throughput platform on the chip surface, but he used very limited number of proteins. So, he did not demonstrate the proteome level investigation and it also revealed the deficiency of this approach because we do not have a PCR analog where we can amplify the proteins and produce in large amount. So, protein content generation was one of the major challenge. However, theoretically this concept was demonstrated in 2000. The E. coli verified proteins were spotted on the chip surface, but very few proteins could be printed. Success of this study motivated other scientists to start duplicating the protein microarrays based success. Other groups such as Mike Schneider, his lab started doing yeast proteome based investigation and they used 5800 yeast clones which were histidine tagged to screen for the known and novel calmodulin and lipid binding proteins. This was at full scale yeast protein array and it showed in year 2001 the potential of this chip technology for
protein interactions and different types of functional applications. There are different types of microarray platform which are available for studying the proteins. Let us have a quick look on some of these available platforms. Antibodies are labeled with fluorescence or other tags which allows detection of the protein after it is captured by the antibody immobilized on array surface. The sandwich immunoassay in which the target protein is captured by an antibody followed by detection using labeled secondary antibody. In reverse phase protein array method the complex mixture such as cell lysates are printed and probed with a specific detection labels. All these three methods direct labeling, sandwich immunoassays and reverse phase protein blots rely on antibodies. However, obtaining good quality antibodies and at the human proteome scale is very challenging. So, people have started exploring different methods of printing protein on the chip surface for variety of applications. The conventional or most widely used method for printing the proteins involve chemical linkage. The purified proteins are immobilized on functionalized glass slide and it can be used for various applications. If one can purify large number of proteins, then this could be an ideal approach for printing proteins on chip surface and studying different types of interactions. The peptide fusion tag is another approach. Peptides can be synthesized artificially. So, the proteins fused to GST, six histidine tags are spotted on the chip surface. Nickel coated slides have also been used for the protein microarray applications. Due to the challenges involved in purifying the proteins or synthesizing the peptides, scientists have also explored the ways to eliminate protein purification steps. Dr. Josh Labatt's group at Harvard developed nucleic acid programmable protein arrays or NAPA in which cDNA containing GST tag are printed on the array surface. Along with that a capture antibody was also printed which is anti-GST antibody. Protein after expression by using self free expression system can be captured with the capture antibody. Another self free expression method try to overcome some of the previously used methods limitation and it tried to print the self free expression system as well as cDNA on the chip surface by using multiple spotting technique. Mist involves self free expression in situ expression of the unpurified PCR products and self free lysates are printed on top of the first spot. So, that both in vitro transcription and translation can be performed on the same chip surface. We have discussed different types of protein microarray platforms available. In this overview slide, both abundance based as well as function based microarrays have been demonstrated. We discussed about direct labeling, sandwich immunoassay, reverse phase protein blots, which belongs to the abundance based methods, and then we discussed chemically linked peptide fusion, nucleic acid programmable protein arrays, NAPA, and multiple spotting technique missed in the 
function based methods. Protein microarrays have provided high density high throughput platform which was one of the major achievement of this technology. Very small volume of clinical or biological samples or pharmaceutical samples can be used on these array surfaces and multifunctional assays can be performed. However, there are limitations and challenges of protein microarrays which includes generating the protein content, purification as well as its storage. So, the development of protein microarrays on which thousands of discrete proteins are printed at high spatial density offers a novel tool to integrate protein function in high throughput manner. In this animation, I will discuss different types of feature, different type of processes involved in protein microarrays and why there is need to use protein microarrays. Before we talk about protein microarrays how they are generated, let us discuss the need for protein microarrays. The functional analysis of proteins is a time consuming process which requires many steps. Analysis of a single protein at a time would be tedious and laborious procedures. Analysis of several protein samples will undoubtedly take longer time if they are run once at a time. So, the protein microarrays have successfully overcome this hurdle by allowing analysis of several samples simultaneously. How to express the proteins and purify? The gene coding for the protein of interest is expressed in a suitable heterologous host system such as E. coli by using expression vectors like plasmids. The host cell machinery is used for transcription and translation which results in a mixture of proteins consisting of the target proteins along with other host proteins. Since the protein of interest is expressed along with other proteins native to the host, it is essential to purify the target proteins before it can be used for protein microarrays application. So, this can be achieved by using chromatography procedures to obtain pure target proteins. The unwanted proteins are first eluded out and then the specific proteins can be purified and eluted. The protein purity can be tested on the SDS page gels. Tags like histidine 6 are often fused with the protein of interest. The array functionalization. The array surface is functionalized with a suitable chemical reagent that will react with groups present on the protein surface.
the aldehyde and silane derivatizations are commonly used as they interact well with the amino groups present on the protein surface, which results in the firm capture of the proteins. The protein solution is printed onto the array surface in extremely small volumes by means of a robotic printing device that has small pins attached to it for printing purpose. The slides are kept for a suitable duration following the printing strip to allow capture of the proteins onto the array surface. The unreacted sites are quenched by a blocking solution such as BSA, which also prevents any non-specific protein binding in subsequent steps. The two different type of protein arrays which are commonly used. The forward protein arrays and the reverse protein arrays. In forward phase arrays, the analyte of interest such as an antibody or aptamer is bound to the array surface and then probed by the test lysate which may contain the antigen of interest. Whereas, in reverse phase arrays, the test cellular lysate is immobilized on the array surface and then probed by using detection antibodies specific to the target of interest. protein detection and analysis. In direct labeling detection techniques, all the target proteins are labeled with a fluorescent or radioactive tag that facilitates easy detection upon binding to the immobilized capture antibody on the array surface. In the sandwich assay, A fluorescent tag secondary antibody that recognizes a different epitope on the target antigen binds to it and detected by means of fluorescence. The protein microarrays are then scanned in a microarray scanner that allows detection of the fluorescently labeled proteins or antibodies. The output from the scanner is received by the softwares from which data can be further analyzed. The certain well characterized proteins can be printed on the array as shown in this animation. Now, a proof of concept array is shown here, where well characterized proteins are printed on the array surface along with their corresponding query molecules shown on the left side labeled with different fluorescent dyes. Now, by using this interactivity, let us match the protein interacting pairs such as chun and phos, p53 and mdm2 by dragging the query to the correct protein on the array surface in order to see the signal output. So, on the array surface, there are both p53 and phos proteins present. Now, if we drag the chun protein 
it should interact with the FOS protein. As you can see by this interactions here. Now, MDM 2 proteins interact with P53 protein. Once this interaction is established, then these signals can be detected by using a scanner. So, in this introductory lecture on protein microarrays, you have seen a glimpse of the history behind the inception of protein microarrays, various types of microarray platforms, a basic outline and data processing workflow involved in performing the high throughput proteomic experiments using protein microarrays. In next lecture, we will discuss various conventional labeling strategies employed in a protein microarray experiment. Thank you.